hallelujah to Jesus for this wonderful, wonderful, glorious day. Thank you for viewing and watching with me and and let's just glorify the Lord today. Let's magnify his mighty name. Hallelujah. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and then we're going to go into the word. And the title of this message today is Passionate Servant. And so I ask you the question today, are you passionate uh, for the Lord and the things of the Lord? Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we offer up this time to you. I offer it up, Lord, and I offer it up with thanksgiving. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are with us and that you're moving in us already. And I thank you, Lord, uh, for this time and this opportunity uh, to bring your truth uh, to the people in the name of Jesus. Now, fire of God, fall on us today. Glory of God, surround us today. In Jesus' precious name, let us be passionate for you today, Lord. Let us be a full of your passion and compassion in Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. Your passion for the Lord will lead you into your purpose and into your destiny. Because you cannot be still if you are passionate for the Lord. You know, a passion is, is a conviction. A passion is something that is an intense emotion. Uh, hallelujah. I believe that there were so many in the Word of God that were passionate about what they were doing. People like Moses, people like Joshua, people like Elijah, Elisha, uh, people like King David. Hallelujah. And you know, I think about 2 Samuel uh, chapter 6 where David wanted the Ark of the Covenant, the Word of God, uh, to be in Jerusalem. Oh, and he, so he went and he got the Ark and he was bringing it up. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And, and he was singing and he was dancing and he was, uh, the timbrels were going and the trumpets were sounding. And he was so excited uh, about bringing up the ark. And, you know, his wife, Michael, uh, King Saul's daughter, was looking out of a, of a window at him. And, and David, you know, disrobed himself. And, and he was uh, that intense conviction and motivation was in him. It was in his heart. You know, passion comes from the heart. Hallelujah. And so King David brought up the ark and Michael looked out the window and she saw him and it says uh, that she despised him. That's in 2 Samuel chapter 6. But it says here, wearing a, a linen ephraim, David was dancing before the Lord with all of his mouth, with all of his might. When the Spirit of the Lord comes upon me, I will dance like David danced. When the Spirit of the Lord comes upon me, I will dance like David danced. I will dance, I will dance, I will dance as David danced. I will dance, I will dance. I will dance like David danced. That's the passion I'm talking about. That we are intensely convicted by the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And it says, and he danced with all of his might. While he and all of Israel were bringing up the ark with shouts and with the sound of the trumpets. And the ark of the, of the Lord was entering into the city. Michael, the daughter of Saul, watched from a window. And when she saw King David leaping and dancing, whoo, for the Lord, she despised him in her heart. You know, there are people that don't want 
you to sing. There are people that do not want you to praise and worship the Lord. There are people that do not want you to dance before the Lord. And to shout. You know, we were in a congregation. And my husband is a praiser. He's a worshiper. And and so the the, the praise team were... Uh, bringing forth the praise and worship, and, and my husband was swaying back and forth uh, to the music, and the pastor of that congregation came to him uh, after the service and asked him not to do any more than what he was doing, not to do any more than the swaying, because there might be some people that were offended by his movements. And it wasn't long until the Lord released us from that place. And we we went on to where God wanted us to be. You know, there, there are those that would like to stop this passion from coming forth. Because passion leads to compassion. Oh, praise God. We're going to get into that. I'm excited about this message today. Thank you, Jesus. Well, let's read on. What happened to Michael, the wife of David? It says in the very last verse of that chapter, verse 23, And Michael, the daughter of Saul, was barren and had no children until the day of her death. So, those that are coming against praise and worship, singing and dancing and leaping, and, and also holy uh, joy, holy laughter, those that are coming against those things of the Word of God, the truth, will be barren. They will not be productive for the Lord. And we are to be productive and bring forth much fruit. Woo! For the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't want to destroy my, my beautiful uh, flowers today that was sent to me by my son and my daughter-in-law. They're just beautiful. Yellow Rose of Texas. Hallelujah. So, that passion in your heart will lead to compassion. You know, there's, there's three things I want us to talk about today. And concerning your conviction to the Lord and your passion for the Lord. And one is that there is a hunger and a thirst in you for the Word of God. You know, it says in Matthew uh, 5, 6, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. You know, Brother Fred and I, when we began to grow in the Lord and... We had a situation with our daughter. At 14 months old, they told her she was going to die because she had no immunity system. She was not born with an immunity system. And therefore, she had all kinds of viruses and colds and flu and, and she ran high fevers and they told her she was going to die. At that point, we became very hungry and very thirsty for the things of God. And we began to search the scriptures and we began to pray and we began to listen to uh, anointed ministers of God that led us into uh, healing and deliverance and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We knew not of the power of God. We knew not nothing about the Holy Spirit. But we began to hunger for that. And we began to thirst for that. And the Lord brought people across our paths that gave us teachings and books and, and encouraged us and supported us uh, in our, our quest. Brother Fred calls it a quest. A quest for the truth. Hallelujah. You know, the Holy Spirit leads you into all truth. Hallelujah. He's not going to lead you in a lie. He's not going to deceive you. He is going to lead you, lead you into all truth. And He's going to teach you about the Word of God and about what you have in the Word. 
Hallelujah. But we must hunger for that and we must thirst for that. You know, in Luke 24, 32, there were two men going down the road of Emmaus. Now, this was after Jesus was resurrected. Uh, he had come, he had risen again. And they were walking along and Jesus started walking along with them. And when their eyes were open to the truth and who they were walking with, it says in Luke 24, 32, they ask each other, we're not, were not our hearts burning within us while we talked with, with, while he talked with us on the road and opened up the scriptures to us? Oh, hallelujah. They had a hunger and a, and a thirst. And also, they became on fire uh, for the Lord. So the first thing I want you to think about is about hungering and thirsting for the Lord and for his righteousness. Hallelujah. The second thing I want you to think about today is moving from your comfort zone to the power zone. Woo! Hallelujah. I don't know if I can sit here. We're going to move from our comfort zone to the power zone. And that's what passion does. Oh, the fire will move you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And, you know, in Amos 6, 1, it says, Woe to those that are at ease in Zion. Woe to, to those who have become comfortable. They don't want any changes in their life. They don't want to be changed from glory to glory. Oh, you know, this is what, what I've learned, and, and, and I'm happy with that, and I don't need to know anything else. Oh, let me tell you something. And so they do not search the scriptures, and, and they do not fellowship with believers, and, and they, they stop growing. They're in their comfort zone. But to move into the power zone, we, we must continue our quest for the kingdom of God. We must continue to, to desire the fellowship of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Oh, can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. I see some of you leaping up and down, and that's exciting to me. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. The third thing I want you to think about today is that when you're passionate for the Lord, there is a fire that is kindled on the inside of you, just like these two men. They said, well, did our hearts not burn within us? Oh, hallelujah. See, I said to you, passion begins in the heart. Oh, you're so hungry for the Lord. You need the Lord. You're desperate for the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, if we go over to the book of Revelation, we see that a church, the Laodiceans, the Lord had something to say to that church of Laodicea. He says, I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, whoo, what's he going to do? What's God going to do? Hallelujah. What's the Father going to do? <clears throat> He's going to spit them out of his mouth because they have become comfortable. They have become lukewarm. Woo! It says, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. You say I am rich and I have acquired riches and wealth and do not need anything. Woo! That is a danger zone. The comfort zone is a danger zone. Oh, hallelujah. And do not need of anything, but you do not realize that you are wretched. Listen, pitiful. These are Jesus' words. Poor, blind, and naked. 
and I counsel you to go and buy fine gold refined in the fire, refined where? In the fire, hallelujah. If you have passion inside of you for the things of the Lord, then there is a fire that has been kindled in you, has been started in you, Woo! hallelujah. And the more passion you have, the fire will get bigger and bigger and bigger until what? The passion turns to compassion. Now that word compassion there, let's look at it for just a moment. The C-O-M in front of that word means that you're together with that individual. You know, there's a phrase that people use they just kind of throw it out and, and, and it says, oh, I feel you. That's the, that's the, the phrase or the sentence they use. I, I feel you. Meaning, I, you know, I know what you're going through. I know, uh, uh, how you feel and, and your emotions and, and, and I'm connecting with you. So see, your passion will lead to compassion, and that will help others. You will become a passionate servant. Hallelujah. You will know how to serve one another in love, in truth, in healing, in deliverance. Woo! Hallelujah to Jesus. We praise you, Lord. We want to be on fire. Fire, fire, fire. We want to be on fire for you, Lord. In Romans 12, 11, it says, never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor, fervence. Keep your spiritual fire going, serving the Lord. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. And then if we go to James 5, 16, it says, oh, and when you're, and when you're praying, oh, it says, therefore confess your sins. Uh, one to another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful. The effectual fervent prayer is the way I like to uh, that translation better. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous person will produce much. What is it talking about? It will get the job done. It will bring forth the will of God. Hallelujah. Not his acceptable, not his good, but his perfect will. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. That fiery prayer uh, will produce much in Jesus' name. It will turn your passion into compassion. Let's go to 1 Peter 4, 8. It says, above all, love each other. Love each other. Because love covers a multitude of sins. But see, there is a, a word there that uh, it says, above all, with fervent love, with fervent charity. That's what the scripture actually says. With fiery love, love one another deeply. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You know, it says... That Jesus, in Matthew 14, 14, Jesus was moved with what? Was He wasn't moved with pride. He wasn't moved with greed. He wasn't moved with, with uh, high uh, expectations of his ego being lifted up. No, 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 no. He wasn't concerned about his reputation. Oh, what? He was moved with compassion. He was moved with that fire on the inside of him that moved him and that brought healing uh, to the multitudes. It says he was moved with compassion and healed their sick. Hallelujah. I'm talking about being a passionate servant of the Lord. Do you have a hunger and thirst for him? 
Are you moving from the comfort zone into the power zone? Oh, hallelujah. And do you have a fire that cannot be quenched, burning on the inside of you that brings forth healing, that brings forth deliverance, that brings a, a people into salvation and into the kingdom of God? Do you have the things that are needed to be a passionate servant of the Lord. I pray that you do today. I release them to you right now in the name of Jesus. I release a hunger and a thirst to come to you. A desire, a quest uh, for the kingdom of God uh, to be within you in the name of Jesus. And I say I release a power to you that you will not be satisfied to sit there in your comfort zone, satisfied with where you are, being lukewarm, but that you will move into that power of the Holy Ghost and fire. Hallelujah. And then I release more fire to you. I know some of you that are watching, you're already on fire. Praise the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I see it. I see the fire all over the place. I see the fire in your heart. I see the fire on top of your head. I see the fire around your body. I see the fire in your hands. I see the fire in your feet. Oh, in Jesus' name. And I release more of it right now. In the name of Jesus, fire come, fire. In Jesus' name, I receive it. I receive more power. I receive more passion for the Lord. That that passion will turn to compassion. In Jesus' name. And that the multitudes will be healed. The multitudes will be delivered. Multitudes will come to the Lord uh, into the kingdom of God. I release it in you and I release it in myself right now in Jesus' precious name. Jesus' name. There's three people being healed from, from a, a crippling arthritis in their body in the name of Jesus. In the name of, in their joints, in their in their their knuckles, in their uh, all of their joints, all over their body. In the name of Jesus, there's a person watching right now that you've got a herniated disc at the bottom of your spinal cord, and and you can you can. Even not even sit down without pain. You cannot stand for very long without pain. You cannot move. You cannot bend over. In the name of Jesus, the fire of God is going into that disc area, removing all inflammation, uh, repairing and restoring that disc to brand new right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Also this morning, when I woke up, this is what I saw in the spirit. I saw brain cells being restored. I saw brain cells being restored. Those of you that have been on drugs or alcohol or any type of substance that destroys the brain cells, I see those restored right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I see some people that you have dizziness and you it's hard for you to balance and hard for you to go from point A to point B without having to, to sit down and 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 collect your thoughts and 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 so that you can move forward. Uh, in the name of Jesus, I curse the root of that dizziness. I tell it to dry up. Uh, in your in your body, I feel like it's the inner ear. Uh, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for healing in that inner ear. I thank you for uh, no more dizziness in Jesus' name. Hello, give Him some glory, Lord. I give you glory today. Praise the name of the Lord, Jesus. Now the Lord says, I, I want you to anoint the people with fresh oil. 
Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Receive it. Come on. Let's raise our hands to the Lord. He's going to anoint us with fresh oil today. Oh, thank you, Lord, for a fresh anointing. Thank you, Lord, for that fresh oil going down upon our heads and down through our bodies and onto our feet in the name of Jesus. Oh, that fresh oil. Oh, praise God. Oh, thank you, Lord, for new beginnings. Thank you, Lord, for doors that are opening up for ministry to you and to me in the name of Jesus. We're going to let our passion become compassion. In Jesus' name. Thank you for viewing and watching. God bless you.